Good day, mates. We often look to the stars for the next great frontier. We dream of distant planets and galaxies far, far away. But what if I told you that one of the most hostile, unexplored, and alien worlds isn't out there in space? What if it's right here, beneath our very feet? We're talking about a realm of eternal darkness, a place where the sun has never shone. This is a world carved by water over millions of years, a silent, secret kingdom hidden deep within the Earth's crust. It's a place that tests the limits of human endurance and courage. Imagine a world turned upside down. Instead of climbing mountains that reach for the sky, you descend into chasms that plunge into the planet's core. These are not just holes in the ground. They are complex, branching networks of tunnels, chambers, and rivers. They are vast, subterranean landscapes that dwarf the tallest skyscrapers ever built by humankind. So why do we do it? What drives a person to leave the safety of the sunlit world and venture into such a dangerous and claustrophobic environment? It's a question I get asked all the time. The answer is simple, yet profound. It's the same spirit of discovery that pushed sailors across uncharted oceans and astronauts into the void of space. It is the fundamental human desire to know what lies beyond the horizon, to pull back the curtain on the unknown and see what's there. We are explorers by nature. This deep-seated curiosity is a powerful force. It's the call of the void, the lure of a map with blank spaces waiting to be filled. It's about being the first human to ever set foot in a place, to witness a sight that no one has ever seen before. There are many deep caves around the world, each with its own challenges and wonders. But there is one that stands above, or rather below, all others. It is the Everest of Caves the deepest, most formidable, and most mysterious abyss known to humankind. It is located in the Arabica Massif, a remote and rugged mountain range in the nation of Georgia, and hidden within these mountains lies a gateway to another world. Its name is Veryovkina Cave. Imagine the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, which stands at 828 meters. Now imagine stacking nearly three of them on top of each other and plunging that entire structure underground. That gives you an idea of the scale we're talking about. Veryovkina Cave descends to an astonishing depth of over 2,212 meters. That's more than two kilometers straight down into the planet. Every great discovery starts with a single moment. For Veryovkina Cave, it began in 1968. Imagine a team of Soviet cavers from the city of Krasnoyarsk, trekking high up in the rugged Arabica Massif. These mountains are a limestone fortress riddled with potential entrances to the underworld. When they found it, it wasn't a grand, gaping moor like you might see in a movie. It was just a crack, a relatively small opening in the rock at an altitude of over 2,300 meters, a hole in the ground. They marked its location, gave it the designation S-115 and moved on, unaware of the colossal secret it guarded. For years, that was all it was, a dot on a map, a number in a logbook. It wasn't until 1982 that another team, this time from the Perovo Speleo Club in Moscow, returned to the site. They descended into the initial entrance shaft, exploring a series of pits and meanders, going as far as their equipment and time would allow. They managed to survey the cave to a depth of 120 meters. The real breakthrough began in August 2015. An expedition from the Perovo Speleo Club descended into Veryovkina, but this time they found something new a previously undiscovered passage. This is the moment every caver dreams of. They followed the new lead and it just kept going down, deeper and deeper into the mountain. They pushed the known depth to 156 meters. It was a small step, but it was proof. In 2016, the teams returned with a vengeance. During two separate expeditions, one in June and another in August, they pushed the cave relentlessly. They descended through vast new shafts and navigated complex winding passages. By the end of the summer, they had reached a staggering depth of 630 meters. Then, in a separate push, another team reached a depth of 1,010 meters. The ultimate moment of triumph came in March 2018. A team led by Pavel Demidov and Ilya Turbanov reached a terminal sump, a water-filled passage at the bottom of the cave. They measured its depth. The final figure was astonishing. 2,212 meters. They had done it. They had pushed through the darkness, past every obstacle, 
and had gone deeper into the earth than any human had ever gone before. Veryovkina Cave was officially the deepest cave on the planet. To truly grasp the scale of Veryovkina, you have to think vertically. This isn't a long, winding river cave that stretches for miles horizontally. It's an abyss, a direct, brutal plunge into the planet's crust. The overwhelming majority of its 2,212-meter 2 depth is achieved through a relentless series of vertical shafts, known as pits or wells. Imagine abseiling down a rope next to the Empire State Building and then doing it five more times. That's the kind of verticality we're talking about here. The journey starts at the entrance, a tight cross-section at over 2,300 meters above sea level. From there, it's straight down. The initial shaft is a narrow 32-meter drop. It's just a taster for what's to come. After navigating the initial maze, the cave's character changes dramatically. It opens up into vast, colossal shafts. The most significant of these is the first truly massive well, which drops for an uninterrupted 155 meters. To put that in perspective, that's a single rope drop taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Like any great geographical feature, Veryovkina Cave is not just one single passage. It's actually a complex system with distinct sections, each with its own name and unique character. After the initial series of pits, explorers reach a major junction known as the Babai Chamber. It's a large room deep inside the mountain, a place where different passages converge. This spot is often the site for the first underground base camp on a long expedition. One of the most famous and awe-inspiring sections is a massive hall discovered by the Perovo Spileo team. They named it the Last Camp of Nemo, which is such a poignant and evocative name for a place so deep and isolated from the surface world. The journey beyond Captain Nemo's camp becomes even more challenging. The passages get narrower and more complex. Explorers have to navigate through sections with names that really hint at the difficulty, like the Squid's Crawl or the Collector. Finally, after navigating this grueling network, the cave reaches its ultimate depth. The final section leads to a terminal sump, a point where the passage is completely submerged in water. This is the Blue Lake Sump, and it's the end of the line for cavers without specialized diving equipment. Water is the architect of Veryovkina Cave. Every passage, every chamber, and every pit was carved over millions of years by the patient, relentless action of water seeping down from the surface. The Arabica Massif is made of limestone, which is a soft rock that's easily dissolved by slightly acidic rainwater. This water finds its way into tiny cracks and fractures in the rock, slowly enlarging them over geological time into the colossal system we see today. The hydrology of the cave is incredibly dynamic, and honestly, it presents one of the biggest dangers to explorers. The water that carved the cave is still very much active. One of the most dramatic events in the cave's history demonstrated this danger perfectly. In 2018, a flash flood pulse swept through the lower sections of the cave. It rose so high that it completely submerged the last camp of Nemo base camp, destroying tents and washing away equipment. The water's journey ends at the terminal sump, the Blue Lake, at the very bottom. But this isn't truly the end. This deep body of water is part of a massive, unexplored aquifer deep within the mountain. Descending into Veryovkina isn't a weekend camping trip. It's a full-blown siege, a meticulously planned assault on the deepest place on Earth. Preparation is everything. Down there, there are no second chances, no rescue services you can call. Next comes the mountain of equipment. We're talking about tons of gear that has to be purchased, tested, and packed. Every single item is critical. There are thousands of meters of specialized static rope, hundreds of stainless steel bolts and hangers for rigging the vertical shafts. Finally, there's the physical and mental conditioning. You have to be in peak physical shape to handle the demands of the cave, but the mental preparation is just as important, if not more so. Life in Veryovkina is a world away from the surface. The first thing that hits you is the complete and utter absence of natural light. Your entire world is defined by the narrow beam of your headlamp. Then there is the cold and the damp. The temperature inside Veryovkina is a constant chilling 4 to 7 degrees Celsius. It doesn't sound extreme, but when you are constantly wet from dripping water or wading through pools, the cold seeps into your bones. Sleep is a brief respite huddled in a small tent pitched on a rare flat patch of rock. 
listening to the constant drip, drip, drip of water echoing through the immense silence of the cave. Getting to the bottom of Veryovkina is impossible without one thing, rope. Thousands of meters of it. But you can't just throw a rope down a hole. You have to build a safe and efficient vertical highway into the earth. This process is called rigging, and it is a technical art form. They use a battery-powered drill to make a hole in the rock, hammer in an expansion bolt, and attach a steel hanger. This becomes an anchor point, a small island of safety in the vertical void. This creates a zigzagging path down the shaft, a complex web of rope that is the team's only lifeline. This vertical rope network is the backbone of the entire expedition, a monumental feat of engineering constructed in one of the most hostile environments imaginable on our planet. In a place as extreme as Veryovkina, things can and do go wrong. Survival here isn't just about having the right gear, it's about having the mental fortitude to handle a crisis when you are days away from the surface. One of the most common dangers is rockfall. The story of the 2018 flood is a perfect example of the cave's unpredictable power. The cavers in the lower sections had to make a rapid and harrowing ascent, climbing through rising water and newly formed waterfalls. It was a race against time, a desperate climb for their lives out of a drowning cave. Finally, there are the squeezes. These are places where you have to exhale to shrink your chest, contorting your body to fit through a rock opening that seems impossibly small. Getting stuck in one of these squeezes deep underground is a primal fear. Beyond the immediate challenge of survival, Veryovkina Cave holds breathtaking rewards for those who venture into its depths. It's really like a hidden museum of geology, a gallery of stone sculptures carved by water over countless millennia. Cavers have discovered helictites, bizarre formations that seem to defy gravity. Instead of growing straight down, they twist and turn in all directions, like tangled threads of stone. Finding a chamber full of these delicate and impossibly rare helictites is like stumbling into an alien sculpture garden. Deep inside Veryovkina, biologists have discovered that life, in its most tenacious forms, finds a way. The cave is home to a unique ecosystem of creatures known as troglobites. These are animals that have adapted over millions of years to live their entire lives in the dark. Veryovkina Cave is more than just a geographical wonder or a biological hotspot. It is a priceless scientific archive. The stable, protected environment deep underground acts as a natural time capsule, preserving clues about Earth's past with incredible clarity. By carefully analyzing the layers in stalagmites, scientists can reconstruct a detailed history of the planet's climate going back thousands of years. These isotopes act as a proxy, a natural thermometer, revealing what the temperature was like on the surface when that layer was formed. The bacteria and other microorganisms found on the cave walls and in the water are of huge interest. Some of these microbes survive through chemosynthesis, deriving their energy from chemical reactions with minerals in the rock, rather than from sunlight. The physical toll of a Veryovkina expedition is immense. It is an ultra-marathon combined with a technical climb, all performed in the dark and cold. Your body is under constant strain, but the psychological challenge is arguably even greater. The complete isolation from the outside world can be profoundly disorienting. Deep in the cave there is no sunlight, no birdsong, no wind, only the echoing drip of water and the sound of your own breathing. Team dynamics become a matter of life and death. You are living and working in close quarters under extreme stress with the same small group of people for weeks on end. There is no room for ego or conflict. The story of Veryovkina is a landmark in the history of exploration. It represents a monumental human achievement, on par with summiting Everest for the first time or reaching the South Pole. This achievement was made possible by a combination of cutting-edge technology and old-fashioned grit. Modern caving gear, from the lightweight, high-strength ropes to the powerful and long-lasting LED headlamps, allowed these teams to go deeper and stay longer than ever before. The cavers of the Perovo Spelio Club and their international partners demonstrated a level of skill, endurance, and audacious bravery that sets a new standard for what is possible in underground exploration. Ultimately, the exploration of Very Ovkina is a story about the unquenchable thirst for discovery that defines us as a species. It's about the courage to look at a dark hole in the ground and not see a danger to be avoided, 
but a question that must be answered. So we return to the surface, blinking in the unfamiliar sunlight, our minds still echoing with the profound silence of the deep. As long as there are dark places on the map, as long as there are questions waiting to be answered in the silent depths, there will be those who have the courage to gear up, clip in, and descend into the abyss, driven by that simple, powerful, and timeless question, what's down there?